On today's show, what to do with the Capitals' third line, and more importantly, what to do with Sonny Milano. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey. I've covered the Capitals for the last three seasons for Locked On and various other outlets before that. I'm also the host of the weekly show called The Capitals Minute Cast, available wherever you find your podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about this team uh, as a whole. Lines one, two, and four are firing on all cylinders, but the third line and what to do with this team. There's questions on the blue line as far as Chikorn and Roy being out of the lineup that even though things are going well, there are definitely things that could get cleaned up uh, so this team uh, can get back in the business of winning games on a regular basis like they've done this whole season. If they could get that third line dialed in and if they could figure out the defense, I think the team would be in that much better of a position. We'll talk about that. A little bit later, we'll talk about new dynamics for this year's Capitals team as they are getting scoring up and down the lineup. This is a team uh, that's scoring a lot of goals in games. This is a team that has a lot of pushback, a whole lot different than last year's Capitals team. I'll talk about that a little bit later. I'll talk about first line fire. Uh, Most importantly, I'm talking Dylan Strom and Alex Ovechkin. But just to get it going here, talking about the big elephant in the room, and that is what do we do with Sonny Milano? And are we pushing the panic button a little bit too early? Uh, It's interesting that, you know, he didn't play a whole lot in the last game. And then before that, he only played the first game of the regular season. And already people are like, we got to get this guy out of here. Uh, it is definitely difficult uh, to be a professional professional athlete uh, that there is virtually little to no room for failure. And uh, you take a look at it. This was a team that was rather high on Sonny Milano uh, when he got his new deal not too long ago that uh, it's just in a short span of time how uh, things can really uh, turn against you. And uh, we're already talking about the fans and Spencer Carberry. It almost appears like they've seen enough. Now, when I was thinking about today's show and I was thinking about Sonny Milano, I was thinking to myself, well, what were my initial thoughts when he came to this team? If we can recollect, he came to this team uh, and he came here and the hopes and kind of where he was sketched out to be uh, was with the Hershey Bears. But he played so well right out of the gate that he found a spot on this team. And I was looking at some of my notes from when he first came here, and my initial thoughts on him were he has a good nose for the puck. Uh, So when he first came here, uh, he had a lot of talent. I remember last season showed glimpses of greatness. And after two games this season, people are already willing to show him the door. An interesting scenario, and if we take a look uh, at Sonny Milano, at his stats, you know, you take a look at it, the 23-24 season uh, was the high water mark for him, 15 goals. Uh, the most goals he had scored before that was with tw- in 21-22 with the Ducks and the 17-18 season with the Columbus Blue Jackets. And the Capitals do have him under contract for some time here. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what their posture is and is ultimately Jacob Verana the right idea, or is there even a better player in mind? That is going to be one of the things I'm talking about in this first segment. But recently here for Sonny Milano in that game against the Carolina Hurricanes showcased his struggle 
uh, to impact the game effectively with only five minutes and 37 seconds of ice time. And, uh, you know, I was thinking back on the game and there was nothing too glaring to me that really popped off the page that I was like, wow, that was horrible. Um, but the flip side of that coin, it was there was nothing that really popped off the page that he did something very well. The difficult part, however, is that this is only his second game of the season. And uh, you have to know that there's got to be a little bit of rust there. It's almost like he's the backup QB uh, in the NFL where you have one game or, you know, a portion of a game to really prove your worth or your garbage, man. Uh, so a difficult position for Sonny Milano. Uh, Sonny Milano. And ultimately, are the Capitals um, and and are their fans getting, uh, you know, disinterested in him uh, too early? Uh, talking about his overall team performance, the team lost four to two, uh, reflecting a broader issues that may be affecting individual players' performance, including Sonny Milano. So, uh, to a certain extent, is Sonny Milano the fall guy? Uh, is it like, hey, if you know Jacob Verona had been in this game, we would have probably won. Uh, not necessarily the case if you take a look at it. And this team, all things considered, I know that there's been some losses here. And losses are going to happen. Uh, we take a look at the first loss with New Jersey, the Tampa Bay Lightning, and the game against Carolina. But all things considered, the team is playing rather well. But there has been a bit of a regression in his game. Um, are the Capitals going to show patience or are they going to uh, to try to change this situation with a different player? Uh, training camp struggles head coach Spencer Carberry. Uh, well, he hasn't been high on Sonny Milano uh, pretty much all through training camp. Now, when I say that he hasn't killed it in the games that he has played, he didn't necessarily kill it in camp. And I think to a certain extent, that is how he lost favor with Spencer Carberry. When Spencer Carberry said, quote, he is just okay, uh, unquote. Uh, so not the kind of thing that you want to hear from your head coach that, hey, man, this guy's knocking it out of the park. To hear your coach say, yeah, he's he's just okay. That is not what we want to hear. And that's definitely not what Sonny Milano wants to hear. And how did he get here um, is inconsistent play, despite a strong previous season, which I spoke of with 15 goals and 49 games. Milano has not been able to replicate that success in this season. And uh, in a league and in a sport of what have you done for me lately, Milano has not done a lot. So where does it get ugly for Sonny Milano? Specific game metrics, uh, statistical struggles. Milano ranks last on the team in several criti critical metrics, including shots of four percentage, expected goals, four percentage, scoring chances, four percentage, and high danger Corsi four percentage. So definitely not something that you want uh, to rank uh, low in all of that. And, you know, if you're not one of the key contributors, then I think that, uh, you know, more eyes are on you. And if you don't play very well, well, you could very well work your way out of the lineup. So the questions now is what happens with him? What are some possible scenarios? Is there a better option than even Jacob Vrana? And I think, you know what I'm getting at here could it potentially be a guy like Ivan Mirshnyshenko, who is a guy that's lit it up uh, at, you know, playing in Hershey, has played well for the Capitals. Would he be a good fix for that position? So what posture and what are the options uh, for the Capitals and Sonny Milano? There is a lot of speculation about uh, sending Milano to the Bears to regain his form. He would need to clear waivers first. Uh, and is there the possibility that someone could scoop him up? That's a question A. And question B is, would the Capitals even care if they did? So talking about the impact of claim status, if claimed, it could provide him with more playing time, which may help in his development and performance. At the end of the day, I think that Sonny Milano is a good player, but you know, this team is in a in a point right now where they made some big acquisitions. And this is, you know, what they say about show business. It's show business. It's not show happy that it's not about Sonny Milano being a nice guy. It's about can he play and can he find his way and how much patience will the Capitals have for Sonny Milano? And uh, ultimately, do they have better opportunities with younger players? Like I talked about uh, with Ivan Mirshnyshenko and, of course, 
Jacob Vrana. Uh, Jacob Vrana has shown glimpses of greatness. I know that was a feel-good story. Um, hasn't necessarily killed it either. And that's that third line in particular has had questions. As we saw LaPierre out and Scarbosa put in and Manjapane uh, put on the third line that um, it was definitely not how it was sketched out to start the season. So in conclusion here, there is a strong belief that a change in strategy um, or location might be necessary. Maybe a control alt delete, a hard reset uh, on Sonny Milano is what is required, or maybe a change of scenery. It's going to be an interesting storyline to follow, that is for sure, uh, to rediscover his game and contribute effectively to the team, whether it be for the Capitals or the Hershey Bears or a different organization altogether. We need to see a whole lot more from Sonny Milano. And uh, it is the weakest link on the team, the third line, that is for sure. Uh, that it's interesting. The first, second, and fourth line, they can get their act together. It is the mix of Jacob uh, Vrana, Sonny Milano uh, at left wing, uh, Hendrick Slop here, or Scarbosa at center, and Manjapani, or to start the season, Protus, that it is, it is lacking a cohesiveness. To paint this team with a broad brush, it's cohesive. Um, and it's not like the third line is horrible, but it is definitely a far cry from the other lines. And as far as Sonny Milano and the Capitals, it is something that is going to need to be addressed. All right. So coming up here after the break, talk, going from lackluster to some knockout play, I'm talking about that first line fire. I'm talking Dylan Strom. I'm talking Alex Ovechkin. And I'll discuss next. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates fast. Faster and Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. So if you are involved in the hiring, if you are involved in the firing, our HR in general, you need Indeed. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about it on the Locked On Capitals podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on NFL all in one place. And there is a lot of football that's played on any given Sunday or Monday or Thursday, and some of those games you're into and some of them you're not. Open up the FanDuel app, put a little bit of money on the game. All of a sudden, all of those games got that much more exciting. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team. Every day, you can find me over on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218, and you can find Locked On Capitals on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. So in this next segment here, we're going to talk about the line that has me real excited. Now, there are two lines in particular that are very dynamic. Uh, I'm talking the first and second line, but the line that is 
really popping off the page and impressing is that first line. And it's uh, primarily being driven. Uh, we take a look at it with Dylan Strom and Alex Ovechkin and Protus as well. It is definitely a lethal threesome on that top line for the Capitals. A lot uh, to be excited about. And the offensive surge uh, that is surrounding this team. You know, the Capitals... Uh, have come out really strong in this 24-25 season. Uh, they're averaging 4.18 goals per game, uh, which puts them third in the league. Uh, so quite a stat, if you think about it. Uh, this Capitals team, you know, is just that they struggled with uh, cohesiveness last season, um, and that is ultimately, you know, due to Spencer Carberry being new to the team and the year before and their struggles there, that this team this year has figured it out. They've really, I feel like, figured it out. And uh, the key contributors, there are a lot of players that are stepping up to the plate, but two of the biggest players for sure are Alex Ovechkin and Dylan Strom. A lot of success uh, this year can be traced back to the veteran forwards of Ovechkin and Strom. They're really driving the team's scoring efforts. That is for sure. And they're doing it with their impressive play. Last week, from October 28th to November 3rd, we saw impressive play from Ovi and Strom big time. Uh, over just four games against uh, the New York Rangers, Canadians, Blue Jackets, and Hurricanes, they racked up a whopping 17 points, six goals, and 11 assists combined. Wow, that is quite stunning. And ultimately, an about face from last year, where you know the goal scoring was few and far in between. It was Dylan Strom carrying the bulk of the mail. That's all the rear view. This year's team is quite stunning. Uh, and it's the dominance. The dominance on five on five is one of the biggest differences over last year through the first 11 games this season. Uh, the Capitals have shown serious dominance uh, in five on five situations. And I'm going to say, especially with Strom and Ovechkin, they've achieved a uh, 52.5 share of shot attempts, uh, a 57.7 share of expected goals, and a striking 62.7 of high danger chances. Those are the stats that you're looking for. And then you add Alexi Protus into the mix, and that has really paid off two together. They've outscored opponents 13 to three. And a lot of this, as I say on the show, as Alex Ovechkin goes, so go the Capitals and Alex Ovechkin's resurgence. Uh, him drinking from the fountain of youth. It has to be something like this because this is quite a bit of a different Alex Ovechkin than last year. Uh, this is a guy that is back-checking hard and skating and just really hungry. And uh, I think that he sees it. I think that he sees the raw potential in this team. And it's not even too raw. I'm going to go ahead and say medium well. Uh, that, um, that I think that he can just see down the football field and that maybe this year's team is truly destined for greatness, but his resurgence, it's really exciting to see Ovechkin looking more uh, like his younger self, especially when you consider how he was performing during this same stretch just last year. It was all doom and gloom. Is he washed? Should he retire? When he only managed seven goals by December, uh, the numbers are showing a significant uptick uh, in both offensive output and overall effectiveness on the ice. Uh, again, uh, is it his training? I don't know what it is, but he is really knocking it out of the park. Now, talking about the historical potential of all of this, what's really intriguing is how the connection between Strom and Ovechkin could put Wayne Gretzky's all-time goals record in jeopardy this season. I know what I said. I said that I saw 35 goals, but hey, I, I'm, I'm totally fine with being wrong in this situation. I love it, as a matter of fact. Uh, Ovechkin has already notched seven goals in just 11 games. Uh, if he keeps up this pace, he could be looking at a remarkable 52-goal season. Wow. Uh, Alex Ovechkin at 39. Now, there are certain caveats. There are certain exceptions. Injuries are the biggest things that could derail his success. Or injuries to his line mates, Dylan Strom, Protus, these kind of players, that would be tough. That would not only put him past Gretzky's total by March, but also push him beyond the 900 career goals milestone 
which would be an unprecedented achievement, uh, not just for the Capitals, but in NHL history. And you're going to see it uh, in real time. It is quite something. In Strom's career year, uh, you take a look back on Strom. He was a guy that was set aside by the Chicago Blackhawks. And like I've always said, uh, the Blackhawks loss is the Capitals gain. You got to be thinking at the end of the day, they are kicking themselves as the one uh, that got away. On the other hand, Strom is also on a scoring tear that suggests he might have a career best uh, at only 27 years old, has tallied at 17 points with four goals and 13 assists over the same 11-game stretch. That's the chemistry, Backstrom-esque chemistry uh, that he has with Alex Ovechkin. At this rate, he could even approach a staggering 126-point season, although it's unlikely, or excuse me, although it's likely he'll see some regression. And that's the name of the game. Uh, you know, the team is going to go through ebbs and flows. Right now, it's really hot. You got to think at some point it will cool a bit. Still, though, if he hits 100 points, he join an elite group of only five skaters in franchise history. Uh, so there is a lot to be excited about. And, you know, just to talk here briefly and look down the football field a little bit, imagine when Leonard, imagine when Crystal and Mirshnashenko and all these guys join this team quite something. So some historical context. So just for some perspective, his career previous high for a single season was 67 points, and he's already surpassed that mark by over a quarter this season. So a lot to be excited about Capitals fans is this team is truly firing on all cylinders. Let's hope they can get Roy back. Let's hope they can get Chikrin back. Let's hope they can figure out that whole third line situation and that this team can stay healthy I truly believe this, and it's not because I do a capital show. I think the sky is the limit for this year's team. All right, so coming up here straight ahead, I'll talk about the new dynamics for the 24-25 caps. What's changed and what players really have popped off the page? I'll discuss next. Price Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings. Price Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long with Prize Picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize Picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy, so your lineup stay in place even if one of your players gets injured. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, Prize Picks keeps your lineups live. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play your first $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Download the app today and use code Locked On NHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. That's use code Locked On NHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first First five dollar lineup prize picks run your game. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, talking about a change in dynamics for this year's team. Uh, this is a team that, even though they face adversity from time to time they still find a way to step up and do some truly great things. The Capitals are something this year. The Caps are, I'm loving this team, uh, the identity of this team. I love the fact that all the insiders that think they know the sport the best, well, they're wrong, and they're truly eating their hat as this Capitals team is chugging along. And the Caps are getting used to a new dynamic this season. It's different. It's kind of refreshing to see uh, them holding leads more often. It was like last year where they would get a lead. They'd give up a lead. And then if they gave up the lead, there is absolutely no chance they were going to get back in this game. They were going to stick their head in their shell like a turtle and say, I give up. Tell me when it's over. Uh, Coach Carberry pointed out that last year they trailed after the first or second periods in over 75% of their games this year. It's all about the future and the, the present. Uh, they've managed to hold the lead after the first period seven times and after the second period eight times. This is huge to their success. Um, and there are challenges that lie ahead. As we saw, 
just the other night as the Capitals fell to the Hurricanes. Uh, that, uh, you know, they've done really well against some good teams. I'm talking the Rangers, the Stars, uh, the New Jersey, for example. Um, but they've also shown some struggles. I'm going to say against Tampa. I'm going to say against the, the Hurricanes uh, that, uh, you know, sometimes when they're up against it, they have struggled, which is going to happen. You can't win all the games. It's about overcoming. But there's been a bit of a hiccup. They've only lost... Uh, one game while leading, which was the recent one against Carolina when they were up 2-1 to one, uh, after the first period. It's been a little challenging to keep those leads intact. And, you know, it's difficult to prevent other teams from catching up, especially in some recent, recent matchups. Uh, that's definitely something they need to uh, want to work on moving forward is uh, to keep those leads intact and prevent other teams from catching up. Now, all things considered, I think they've done a pretty good job doing that this year. It's just definitely something uh, that they need to work on going forward. So as we take a look at this season, there's a lot to like. It's about keeping leads, maintaining leads. But if you give up the lead, have the answer, have the pushback, develop a plan. Don't go into a fight or flight mode. And I think your team will do really well. If you take a look at what the Capitals did well, Against uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets, it was a lot of East and West passing. It was give and go uh, that was, you know, drawing the netminder out of position. Or, you know, if it goes to the other guy, he's the goalie's going over where if you shoot it back, he can get it in. They had great success doing that. Now, I understand that you can't rubber stamp it and do that all the time, but that was a recent example where I think the Capitals played some of their best hockey. Uh, where it was a team that was operating as a unit. Uh, stretch the puck out with north-south passing, but then when you get close, the given goes, the east-west, that was their key to success. And have guys like Connor McMichael that uh, will get up front and and get those greasy, dirty goals. And you know what we've seen success on the first line, where if you have two big frames, like Protus, uh, you have a big frame like Alex Ovechkin, uh, that then that presents an opportunity uh, for Strom or something like that to show, you know, where they're screening the goalie where he can drive it home. You've seen truly great things uh, with this team this year. It's putting it all in a pot all together and getting it all to work well. Now, like I said, it's not a one size fits all and different teams have different schemes. It's just the Capitals have to keep with what they're doing uh, this season. Don't get too distracted on losses. It's going to happen and just concentrate on what worked well. Like I talked about the East West passing, the give and go, um, you know, just the net minding being rock solid and build on those things. Uh, don't concentrate too much on the negativity because that kind of stuff will eat you alive. Capitals fans, this team is playing much better than anyone had anticipated. In a lot of ways, even better than I anticipated. I saw them making it to the playoffs, but I, you know, hosting a show on this uh, uh, team five nights a week, I didn't see them playing this well right now. It's exciting. As Capitals fans, you should be excited as well. Let's hope they can have a really great week ahead. All right, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals and making it your first listen today. For your second listen, find Locked On Fantasy Hockey, become a fantasy hockey expert, and get the edge over your league mates and daily tips. From Steel and Flip, find Locked On Fantasy Hockey on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.